Well, a very good afternoon, and uh, you're probably wondering why am I reviewing Dumping Ground, uh, a kids' program, because I got asked by one of my uh, subscribers, so uh, try to be versatile as much as you can. This is a BBC series, uh, its 100th episode was released in March this year, and the story behind this series, it comes out of a series called Tracy Beaker, which uh, is a Jacqueline Wilson book. And this follows on to a house called uh, Elm Tree House, I think that's what they call it. And basically it's children who have got their parents uh, split up and they're dumped and their foster or what have you are put into this big house hoping to get into foster homes. Now the main actor in it who I really like is an Irishman called Connor Bourne, Bourne something like that. He's really good. He's been in lots of good Hollywood movies. He's been in it from the start. But uh, the kids in it, are very good actually some of them are excellent is a girl that's just literally come out of the series and she's doing um, a new thing that I reviewed called safe and she's brilliant she was in EastEnders and a lot of the actors that have come out of it have done well to be honest with you they've all done really well uh, there's a lot that I ain't gonna talk too much about it but they're not the greatest actors I can talk a bit about kid actors having gone to one of the biggest drama schools in London and did a bit when I was younger so I can review kids quite easily some that are good and some that aren't. And what I've uh, seen of it while my kids have been watching it is basically if you're not up to scratch, you get weeded out. The fact that they're in series six tells you a story. So what would I give Dumping Ground? Well, if you had kids of a certain age, up to the age of 15 or 14, I would say it's definitely a nine out of 10 because they really do like it. Kids love this program. They can't wait for it to be put on. And the BBC are ruthless. I mean, they don't make six series or something unless it actually is good. So let's move forward. That's that out of the way, so I've got the uh, subscriber happy. I want to talk about a film that's just got released on DVD, a film that I watched in uh, January this year called The Darkest Hour. This is Gary Oldman's finest performance. Now, I don't want to name drop on this uh, blogs, but I have worked with Gary Oldman on a project in the 90s about buying up houses after the Second World War, and you couldn't ask to meet a nicer actor. I actually had his sister, Mo from EastEnders, on the ship which I was on... Uh, working on and uh, she was on a soap opera cruise and she's a real character and that's her real life name Mo so she's playing the part and name Mo and she told me at the time that Gary was making this I've got to tell you if you haven't seen this film then you really do need to see it it's an outstanding performance I mean he, a lot of it a lot of you hopefully would have seen it but if you haven't this is one that I would definitely pay for on Sky or download or get on DVD for the extras the actual film's not a great film to be honest I don't really like the film it's too dark for me there's a lot of actors that I do like, uh, even one again I've worked with, Ronald Pickup, he's excellent. But Ullman's performance was the biggest certainty in the Oscars for many years, and I can't say enough good things about him. The scene on the underground train is one of the best scenes of the last ten years for me. Fantastic, and he deserved it. The other film I want to mention that's been out for a while, if you haven't seen, is of course Three Billboards Outside Missouri. This is Francis McDermott at his finest, real fantastic. But the actor I liked who was in this she got the Oscar, by the way, is Sam Rockwell. This is a very underrated actor, a really good actor, supporting actor. He's been doing too many films that no one has seen. I've seen a lot of his stuff, and I liked him. And that film, the final scene in that actual film, uh, Three Billboards, when they're in the car together, is superb. What I can't understand while I'm talking about DVD releases is The Shape of Water. This, for me, was the biggest fucking disaster the Oscars have ever had. What they were on and what medication they were on, I have no idea. When I found out that it had won Best Film and Best Director, I was in Palma for the day on a ship and I went into a chemist and the bloke said to me behind the counter, he said, you look, you look a bit worried, sir. I said, yeah, have you got anything for my headache? What caused a headache? I said, I need the strongest drugs you've got. He said, well, what's it about? I said, well, they've just given the Oscar to The Shape of Water and I want the same drugs that they're on in Hollywood. And this is what the chemist said to me. I haven't got anything that fucking strong because this film is a fucking joke from start to finish. How that film won Best, Os Best Oscar, I have no idea. As for director, I still have no idea. There's so many films out there that you could have watched this year. That is the biggest pile of shit ever. And it's called The Shape of Water and it should have been The Shape of Somebody Else's Water because it was, should have been pissed down a toilet. It's absolute rubbish. So... That's just me going on and on. Thank you for all the people that are uh, pressing the subscribe button. I do appreciate it. And for the people that are watching them, I'm going to carry on. There's a lot for me to say that I want to say, and uh, I'm going to carry on saying it. Once again, if you're asking me about Dumping Ground, the kids, they love it. If you're asking me about Darkest Out, it's a must-watch. Free billboards, it's up there with all the great films. I'll give you a quick example of what I class as a good film. My favourite film of all time is The Shawshank Redemption, and the reason for that is simple. 
It's the quickest three hours of your life. It's a great storyline. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's great acting. And more importantly, it keeps you on the edge right to the end. So that's where I put three billboards alongside that. As for one of the greatest scenes in the history of cinema, that would go to a film called One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. And the scene would be when Jack Nicholson is sitting next to this big red Indian and he hasn't spoken for the whole film. And the Indian hands him, he, sorry, he hands the Indian a piece of uh, chewing gum. Now, you've got to remember, the film's been going on for nearly an hour and a half. The Indian's not spoken. And the Indian turns around and says, juicy fruity. And Jack Nicholson's face is one of the best because the Indian's been conning everyone that he's saying he can't talk, but not by speaking. And of course he can. So that's how good the last scene in Three Billboards is. I want you to see it. And if you haven't seen it, make sure you do. Because when they sit in the car together, it's a great scene. Listen, that's all for me now for today. Uh, dumping ground, I'm going to give it what I said I was going to give it. Enjoy your day and have a great day.